you moved back into Christchurch and got a, your own house there, or rented a place? Well, when we left in Chicago, we came back to look for a house, and the houses were very easy to get then, very easy, and we got one. We stayed with um, friends at Clary's that worked with him, a man that worked with him. We stayed with them for two or three days, and we got a house in a couple of days. We moved into it. So did you make some friends once you had um, bet, the, your, your baby bet? Yeah, once we got down and got settled, we made friends there. Because you would have met some other woman who had some yeah. young babies? Yeah. Ah. And so that was in 1935 you had bet, was it? Yeah. And it's like you say here that you, your your mother always gave you a dose of sulfur treacle. Sulfur treacle. Yeah. yeah. Every spring. And and so you started to give. Yeah, <laughs> I used to growl like anything about it. It was supposed to clear your system out for the, you know. Yeah. And they hated it. I probably knocked off giving it to them then. You, you don't really hear of it anymore, do you? No. And Clarence's mother used to make emulsion. Do you remember the old Lane's emulsion? You wouldn't remember it. But it was very popular in those days. And she used to make her own. And you know how she used to make it? Uh, you know that she'd take eggs, about eight or ten eggs, and she'd pour this overproof rum, I think it was called, and you pour it over the eggs and you leave them for so long and it all disintegrates, you know. Uh, the shells, you, you don't taste the shells then, you know, it all melts and all. And she used to make this emulsion and uh, that was for coughs and colds and that in the winter. And I used to get the kids and they used to hate it. So it was like... <laughs> It was like eggs marinated in rum. Yeah, well, I've probably still got the recipe. <laughs> I think I have. I was uh, wondering it didn't make them drunk. But I couldn't believe it. Um, you know how the eggs would... Oh, they just melt into, into liquid. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So, then, who did you have after that? What child was after Bat? After Betty. Yeah. Then Olive. Then Olive. Yeah. How much later was that? Oh, Olive Betty. Two, two years, two and a half years. So then you had two to push around? Then I had Ron. What year did you have Ron? These questions, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember years or anything like that. You have to work that out yourself. Mum, what year was Ron born? Uh, uh, you were born in '46. About '38, I think. Oh, is there six years between you two? Seven. Seven years. So then, then, by the time you had Ron, the um, war was imminent. Imminent. <laughs> yeah, the war had started. Oh, it had started then. Yeah. And how did that affect your daily life? Well, didn't all Clary's brothers went there? They wouldn't let Clary go. He was in a key position on the P and T, so he didn't get away. But, um, his brother Alan went into the Air Force, and his brother Eric went away with a second echelon, I think it was. Uh, over to Egypt, you know, at that way. And his brother Ham, he went into the army. He was a prisoner of war for five years. So Ham was basically put into a prison camp straight away as soon as he got over there? Well, shortly after, yeah, he was, and he was a prisoner of war for five years. So the family must have been very worried about all of them? Yeah, that was... Were you doing anything, yeah. like knitting or anything for the war effort? Or? No, I didn't do anything like that, I don't think. That was... Well, 
them. And this went into the, this was in the home guard. He didn't get away to the war. And Malcolm, he didn't get away to the war because he'd always had a bad leg. He'd had a big piece taken out of his leg. And Bruce joined the Navy. He was the youngest one. I was in the Navy. I didn't realise that. Bruce must have been very young. Yeah, I don't know how old. He must have been old enough to go away. But he was in the Navy anyway. And through the, through the years, they all met up when the war finished. The three of them met up in England. Uh, which three? That is, um, Alan, Alan Pam. Bruce, and Pam. All three of them. That must have been amazing for them. Yeah. I bet you had they had a big time when they all got got to yeah. meet up and realised that everyone was still alive. Did because yeah. did people know that Ham was still alive when he was in the prison camp? Oh yes, I think so. So you must have got to know the boys quite well then, after living with them. Yes, I did. So, and was it really stressful for Grandad too, knowing all his brothers were out of war? Probably, yes. And his mother. Yeah. So did, I heard Grandad tried to sneak away to the war. Yeah, he wanted to go, but they wouldn't let him go. He had, um, he had three children. And they said he was in a key position, so they wouldn't let him go. So how did he try and sneak away? Oh, I got a letter uh, saying that he was due in camp on such and such a day. And he was away in the country. And I rang his boss. And I said, I'd got this letter and he was due, due to be... Um, in camp at such and such a time, and they said, oh, don't take any notice of it. So I, I thought, oh, well, I've done my duty in that. And when Clary heard about it, he went, cool, because he reckoned he should have been there. But he didn't know anything about it either. So he was basically getting called up? Yeah. Ah, and so he really... Wants so his boss said, I don't know, his boss must have fixed it all up, and he wasn't allowed to go. And did you get a bit of a shock when you got this letter saying yeah. that he was going away to camp? Yeah, I did. And was Alan married when he went off to Alan the war? Alan never married. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. When did he die? Um, our 40th wedding anniversary. He died this, that weekend. Did he really? Mm -hmm. So he was the first of the brothers to go, was he? Yeah, well, we were having a big, um, we were going to have a big party, which we did have. But uh, Clary and him had to go down to the funeral uh, the same weekend as we had the party. They went down to the funeral first and then came home and we had the party. So was the depression even worse during the war? What was worse? The depression, like lack of money and things. Oh, yes, it was really bad. There was rationing and lots of butter was rationed, sugar was rationed. So how did that work? Tea. Well, it didn't worry me. Um, if we, we'd, change, we'd exchange coupons. You know, if someone didn't drink much tea and someone else wanted butter or something, you could exchange your coupons. That way. It, it didn't really affect us very much. So, did you get more coupons because you had three children? Oh, probably, yeah. And so, did you have some friends whose husbands were away at the war? Have to work. Did some of your friends have husbands at the war? I can't remember. I didn't have a great many friends in Christchurch, really. I was busy enough with my family. I can't remember any of them. Yeah, and so you didn't experience sort of people losing their loved ones? No. Much? No, not really. So is um, 
Did you listen to the radio a lot to find out about the news, what was I happening? Did. Yeah, we used to listen to that broadcast. Do you remember them actually declaring the war? No, I don't. No, I don't really remember that. Yeah. So, do you remember anything else that sort of stands out during the war time? You couldn't get silk stockings. You, they were awfully hard to get. Uh, and elastic and things like that. There were some things that you, you really couldn't buy, you know, you went short of. Money was the worst. You were really short. You know, the wages were small. Granddad got uh, 18 pound a fortnight for everything. And do you remember sort of what things cost? As in yeah, 21 shillings a week. That was our rent. Yeah, that. But um, sugar and um, coconut, sago, things like that, they were only about four and a a pound. Is that like four cents? Or? You, um, my would it be my fortnightly bill for groceries and that would come to about 18 shillings for the fortnight. Is that about like a pound 80 or a dollar 80 or something? Um, 18 shillings a year, that'd be. Mm. So who owned your house? Do you know who, what your landlords were like? Or? Well, I don't, can't remember the chap who owned it, but um, we bought it eventually. Oh, did you? So how many rooms did it have? After about five years, we, they put it up for sale and we bought it. But what a job we had to scratch up enough for deposit. And Granddad had, um, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, bonuses or something that you, you paid in for all the year. And they accumulated, and he used uh, those to buy the house. Oh. Do you remember I how much the house? We bought it for seven hundred and fifty pounds. Really? Yeah. Seven hundred and fifty. And we had dreadful job to scrape up enough to put a deposit down on it. <laughs> and from then on, we just used to pay twenty-one shillings a week. Oh, right, so you're still paying your rent, basically, in, yeah, as your mortgage. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Do you remember what the house was like? Oh, it had three bedrooms. It had, uh, had a little oh, incinerator, chip heater, whatever you call it, for heating the water. That was, that was really good in the kitchen. And uh, we had a fire in the fireplace in the lounge. We had, see that window box? Yeah. Window seat. We had one in the kitchen, no, one in the lounge and one in the bedroom. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, they were quite good. Did you have like a washing washing machine? And Oh, no, no washing machine. What did you use? You just washed by hand and did copper. At the copper. Did you really? How often would you do that? Once a week. You'd have to light up the copper. Did you have um, a fridge? No. What? Did, how did you keep your? Oh, we just had safe outside. You and didn't didn't have fridges in those days, but they did. Um, before we shifted to Kaikoura, we when we shifted to Kaikoura, we bought our first fridge. And you'd been married for how long? Oh, well, Betty was 18. 18 years old. <laughs> so you'd been married nearly 20 years. Yeah. Wow. And the chance came to ship to Kaikoura. There was an opening for um, an overseer on the P&T. So Clary put in for it and we shifted to Kaikoura. And so we bought our first car. What was that? 
Do you remember what it thought it was? Uh, yeah, uh, a vanguard. A vanguard. Yeah. So did Grandad, he, um, he got a promotion, did he? Yeah. Okay. So how long did you live in this house in Christchurch for? About 20 years. Oh, really? Okay. Now, after, after Ron, you had another child, didn't you? Yeah, and I lost her. How, how old was it when it died? Oh, I lost it. Straight away. Was it stillborn? Yeah, it was stillborn. And it was a boy or a girl? Boy. Did you name him at all? No. Didn't have to, in those days, you didn't even have to do anything. I didn't even see it. You didn't even see it? No. Now they have a proper burial and everything, don't they? Yes, yeah. So, was that really distressing? Oh, yes. Um, that was because I was very ill, too. Uh, what happened was I hemorrhaged. Uh, it was only seven months. I was only seven months pregnant. Oh. And I hemorrhaged, and uh, I hemorrhaged badly all night. Uh, no, from six o'clock in the morning till or the carry got the doctor and he didn't come and then uh, he rang him a second time and he came rushing in and he just looked around and said where's the nearest ambulance we have to get her get her to hospital and they got me into hospital and I'd been hemorrhaging since six o'clock in the morning badly and at nine o'clock they just took me into hospital by ambulance, pushed me into a room, put a curtain around, left me. And about nine o'clock, the doctors came down and one put his head around the corner and he said, uh, what's your problem? And I said, I've been expecting a baby and I've been hemorrhaging since six o'clock this morning. He said, my God, they're waiting for you upstairs. He said, they've been waiting for you. And they rushed me upstairs and uh, I don't remember much after that, only that I was in labour, had brought labour on. And um, then I don't remember much about it. And then four o'clock in the afternoon, this doctor came up and he said, how are you? And I said, dreadful. I said, I wish you'd do something about it. And he said, we're going to. He said, you've been too ill to operate on. But he said, I think we can safely operate now. This was four o'clock in the afternoon. So you'd already lost the baby by the stage? Yeah. And he said, of course you'll have no baby. And I said, yes, I realise that. And he said, well, I think we can safely operate on you now. So they operated. And uh, Clary came in to see me about eight o'clock that night. And... Uh, they told him I was on a dangerously ill list for 48 hours. So he went home and um, a friend of mine was looking after the children and Eric's wife, Jean, Auntie Jean. And he said to her, he said, I don't think she'll see the night through. He said, she's dangerously ill. And um, so then they went home, but anyway, I pulled through. Wow. And of course I didn't have the baby. That was, we lost that. So that must have been a really horrible time for you, Nana. Yeah. And do you know what actually was wrong with you? Have they told you? Yeah, it was just, uh, I just hemorrhaged. The, uh, what happens, it only happens once in a hundred women. But the afterbirth comes away before the baby and of course when the afterbirth comes away that blocks all oxygen from getting into the baby and that's how, how I lost it. So the baby didn't have any chance? No. Oh. Once you start bleeding like that. Doctor told me, he said, um, you know, ordinary bleeding, that's all right, but he said if you're going to have a baby, he said it's very serious if you start bleeding. So it sounds like somebody made a mistake when they just put you in the room and didn't... Oh, yes, they should have, should have notified them, I suppose. Yeah. Wow. So that was a bit of a break then between... That was eight years between um, that, losing that one. 
No, eight years between Ron and Helen. Yeah. So, was it reasonably common though for women to lose babies in those days? Oh. Well, not common, but wasn't unheard of. Oh no, I think it was. It was probably quite common. Yeah. There was nothing I could do about it. It was. It. It's just something that happens, as you said, once in about a hundred women. Mm -hmm. Happens to. And of course, our granddad's mother had already lost a baby, so she would have been able to help you a bit. Yeah. And did your mum and dad come up for that? No, because Clary never told them. They were terribly upset. But he, he said he didn't want to worry them, but um, they were really upset that they didn't know anything about it till it was over. Because they'd like to have given you some support. No, well they couldn't have done much, they might have come up, but then I don't think he wanted them to. I don't know what his idea was of not telling them till after I was out of danger, mm -hmm. and then he told them. Mm. So by this, and then, what, you were in which hospital? Was it in Christchurch? Mm. Do you remember which one it was? I just. Close to the public hospital. Okay. And so then you had mum in Christchurch as well? Yeah, that was at St Helens. St Helens. And then you had Carol after that, yeah. In Christchurch as well? Yeah. So you lived in Christchurch for a long time? Oh, yes. Um, Carol. Oliver, you know, Carol was three when we shifted to Kaikoura, permanently. And was Bet still going to school and everything when you moved? Or? It was working. Oh, right. We left her down there. In Christchurch? She got bored. She didn't want to leave the job she was in. So she got bored in Christchurch with a friend of mine. Oh, right. And what? What do you remember of Christchurch in those days? What was your sort of favourite things to do? Well, we didn't do much really. Once the children arrived, I used to go to cards once a week, UK tournament, and um, we didn't really have much uh, social life. Did Grandad belong to any clubs or anything? No. He did like to go for the some beers though, didn't he? Eh? <laughs> he did like to go for some beers though, didn't he? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so where would you take the children? Oh, we used to take them, take them to the park sometimes, and feed the ducks and things like that. And then they got their own interests. You see, Betty started playing hockey. Oh, did she? Yeah, and Olive started playing basketball, and Ron started playing football. Rugby? Mm. Well, that would have been quite good. Yeah. Did you go watch them play in that? Yeah, Clary used to go and watch him play. Did you used to go anywhere on summer holidays? We went to Kaikoura every lot of holidays. We used to take the children up. And they'd stay on the farm, would they? Stay with Grandma. Um, were they still on the farm then? No, they didn't have a farm. No, Grandad just worked on the council, I think. And wasn't there some funny story about... Oh, that was um, Grandad's brothers with the cows, when they bring the cows in. Riding the cows. Yeah, riding the cow down the hill. They had a big, steep hill at the back of them. And they reckon that um, uh, one of the boys, either Malcolm or Bruce, rode one of the cows down one day and it died. Oh. He would have been in trouble for that. Yeah. Do you remember any funny stories from Christchurch with any of the kids? Um, when I can remember in Kaikoura one night, they used to have a nightman came round and emptied the can because you had an outside toilet. 
and these boys, other Bruce or Malcolm, tied a string across these path to try and trip the um, milk, the, <laughs> the <laughs> nightmare up with his cat. <laughs> and Grandma went out. She happened to find it, so she uh, she disconnected the string before the nightman could come along. <laughs> Always remember that. Oh. And I heard that you got um, very ill from the milk that you were drinking. I didn't. Did somebody get something? Oh yeah, I know. I got um, I got TB gland. Yeah, I don't know what it was through. Anyway, uh, my face came right out. My neck came right out there. And got the doctor and um, he, he didn't know what it was, Dr. Gordon. He said, I'll send you to Christchurch, a specialist. He said, it could be a TB gland. And I said, it won't be that. Because I said, there's none in our family and there's none in Clary's family. So anyway, so I'll send you away anyway. So he sent, sent, sent me away. And I went to this um, specialist in Christchurch. And I was quite sure it wasn't a TB gland. I'm I went quite happily because I was sure it wasn't. And he told me it was. And I got the shock of my life when he told me it was a TB gland. He said, you have to have it cut out. So I had to go into hospital and have it cut out. And then they, uh, all the children had to be tested. I don't know, they had tested in their arms here. Carol's got quite a big scar where she was tested. I don't think the others did have. And, um, and so you don't know how you got it? I don't know. So uh, did it, once you got it cut out, was that okay? Yeah. And, um... They reckon that's from the milk. They had to fumigate the house or something, I think. I sort of remember that. They reckon it was from the milk. Because after that you had to pasteurise the milk. Yeah, and well, while I was in the hospital, this uh, man came round, he had a white coat on and that. And they'd had typhoid in Kaikoura before that, hadn't they? They'd had the typhoid in Kaikoura. And this uh, man came round and he was asking me all sorts of questions about milk and water and everything. And uh, I was just answering his questions. I thought he was a doctor. And um, and then after he said, oh, well, I think that's all. And I said, well, there's one big burning question. He said, what's that? I said, when can I go home? And he looked at me and said, I'm not a doctor. And I said, oh, I thought you were. And he said, no. He said, I'm from the health department. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my God, what have I said to him? <laughs> And I began to worry then in case I'd said something wrong, you know. But anyway, that's what it was. He was from the health department. And when he left, he said, oh, well, I'll give you a bit of advice. He said, always buy pasteurised milk and always boil your water. Never drink water that's not boiled. And I never have. The only time I drink water that's not boiled is when I'm away from home like this. But I always keep Pour water in the fridge. Do you really? Or is it done? So, do you remember any funny stories from when Mum and uh, Ron and everyone was young? No. Oh. Did they get into trouble much? Not really. I remember somebody left a, a window open one time and it, it blew out and and, um, and Clary went, Clary was passing and this blew, the wind blew the window out and broke it and Betty happened to be passing so Betty was the one he grabbed and gave a smack to for leaving the window, to, the window open. I don't even know if it was Betty but she got the blame. Oh yes and another funny instance was um, Muriel and Les were getting married, that's Clary's brother, and I had quite a few of the relations staying with me, 
And we used to have to pump our water with an electric pump. You turned the electric on and every day it had to be turned on for a couple of hours. Anyway, it broke down and I had people staying in the house and people wanting baths and showers and, and we ran out of water. So Clary had to fix it. And this was the morning of the wedding. And um, didn't used to take much to upset him in those days. Anyway, he's trying to fix this pump, and uh, and I came along, and I don't know what I said to him. I said something to him. Must have upset him. And this bucket of water came flying at me through the window. He was going to uh, throw this bucket of water through the window at me, but I never got it. And there's a couple coming, going to the wedding, and they're all dressed up in their finery. <laughs> And they get nearly to this window, and out comes this bucket of water and just missed them. And I'd never met them before, and they came to see how to get to the church, or to go to this wedding. They were relations, but I'd never ever met them. And they just missed this bucket of water coming out the window. <laughs> Was Grandad a bit sheepish after that? I suppose he would be. <laughs> yeah. I think the so what else can you tell us about Christchurch, Nana? Oh no, what am I going to tell you about about this lady next door? Sheep. About the sheep. Oh, every Wednesday we had to rush out and shut the gates because the sheep and the cattle used to come in on the lawns and make oh make awful mess of your lawn if you didn't shut the gate. Why were they there, Nana, in the middle of Christchurch? Oh, they drove them through to, from, through to Addington, to the sail yards. Are the they the ones yards. near Hag Hagley Park? Was that the ones near there? What's that? Around Blenheim Road there. Yeah. There's some across the road from Hagley oh, Park. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the, would they ever put sheep on the Hagley Park? Well, there's, mm. uh, no, it was mostly cattle. I used to get in. So you'd have all these cows running around your backyard? Yeah. <laughs> Front yard. Front lawn. <laughs> used to tear up the lawn. <laughs> Did anyone used to complain? Oh, I don't know. We, well, we didn't complain to anybody. We moaned about it amongst ourselves. Did you have any good friends in Christchurch? Yeah, lady next door, I was quite friendly with her. What was her name? Nilla, Nilla Trotter. And any others? Mrs Gay over the road. Oh yes, we had Mrs Gay over the road, Mrs Dempsey over the road. Glenis Taylor, you used to walk right out to Papua Nui to yeah. her house. I used to walk Remember? away out to Glenis, she lived away out Papua Nui. And I used to push the pram all that way, go in the morning, push the pram and I had, uh, who did I have in the pram then, I must have had Olive in the pram and Ron sitting on a board across the pram <laughs> really? and poor old Betty on a wee trike biking all the way. I often think, well, I really asked a lot of Betty to ask her to go all the way, oh it must have been oh, four or five it. miles. Yeah, and a wee way. legs used to take this trike all the way there and all the way back. We used to come home about four o'clock. Because yeah. you couldn't afford to take the bus or tram? No. Mm. And what's this about the insurance man? Oh. Well, I told you we had a, um, a sort of a heater, like an incinerator thing. It used to heat the water. And... Um, Clary used to get up in the morning and light that. He got up first and he would light that and have it all nice and warm for me to go out to get the breakfast, see. And he had gone to work and I'd come out and I'd get a <laughs> I'd get dressed in front of this nice warm fire. And one day I'd been there getting getting on I suppose I'd I'd got dressed and I went running outside round to the shed to get a, a shovel of coke 
because we kept around there to put on this fire. <laughs> and I came running back in with a shovel of coke to go into the door and here's the insurance man with his eye up at the keyhole, looking through the keyhole. And I got such a fright I nearly dropped the shovel of coal. And he jumped back and I must have yelled out and he jumped back and he said, Oh, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I, I nearly lost my job once before for, for doing this, for looking through the keyhole. And um, afterwards, I, I got such a shock I couldn't say anything. And I, afterwards, I realised that he must have been there. He used to come every Monday and collect the insurance money. And I realised he must have come and seen me getting undressed. I was seeing me getting dressed in front of this. Or else, why else? Would he have his eye up the keyhole? And was it a Monday? Yeah. It was a Monday. I think it was a Monday. I think so, it was... I mean, as in, he didn't turn up on another day and then watching you most days? No, or I think it was every. He used to call every Monday for the insurance money. Eh? So, did you report him? No, I didn't. <laughs> you should have never. I got him. too big a shock, I think. What a weirdo. Yeah. So from Christchurch, um, you moved to Kaikoura. That's when Granddad got the promotion. Yeah. And so you moved all the kids except for Bess up there. Betty didn't go. She had, did a good job. Had she met Stuart yet? Um, she'd already met Stuart. Yeah. So she was, but she wasn't engaged to him or no, anything. No, no. They were just. Oh, they were probably writing to each other because she was up in Auckland in the Navy. And what did you think of Stuart? Oh, I quite liked him. I thought he was a nice little fellow at the time. Yeah. And so, what did you think of moving to Kaikoura? Uh, I think, I think Bet must have got engaged before we left before we left for Christchurch because I can remember having a party and um, Stuart had a friend in the Navy. Stuart had a, a Navy friend and he was down staying with us too at the time for this party and uh, Nilla next door that I was telling you about, she brought in a whole big tray full of cream cakes and put them up in the cupboard they were for supper. And um, anyway, I can't think what happened. Ev and, and Ray Amos were, were there. And I don't know what Ray Amos did or said. He, did, he must have done something or said something. Because I, I, I remember I burst into tears. And this friend of um, Stuart's, he came up and he had a piece for him and he said, you make Gwen cry, he said, you make me cry. And he tore into him and uh, anyway, he went home. And the next day we found all these cream cakes up in the cupboard. Nobody did eat them. We forgot to put them out. <laughs> so Ray Amos was Ev's second husband. Yeah, yeah. a little time. And because her first husband died of um, TB, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So, you think that was for the engagement party? Yeah, that was. It uh, must have been Betty's engagement party. Because otherwise we didn't have parties. <laughs> oh, you had a lot more after that, though, didn't you? Though, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, did you like the actual move to Kaikoura? Did you want to go there? Well, yes. Yeah, we did. Yes, so I didn't want to go. And so, uh, Granddad's mum and dad were still alive then, were they? Oh, his father had died, I think. Yes, his father had died. He just had his mother up there. Okay. And so, you moved to a house by the sea then, did you? Yeah. Right opposite the sea. That must have been quite nice. It was beautiful. I can remember the uh, when we first moved in there, 
and seeing the moon come up over the water. And it cast a shadow right across the water. It was beautiful. And I thought, fancy, you know, could have been could have been living there and seeing that all the time, but we had we sort of missed it, you know. It was beautiful. So after that, did you start working or was it not for oh, a few years? How I started working was um, we used to go out around the commercial for a few drinks at night and uh, we were around there this night and this Mrs. Mac said to me, all her stuff, she was funny, um, temperamental sort of a woman, didn't keep very well. And um, she said to me, uh, what about coming and, and helping me out? And I said, no, I've never worked in a hotel in my life. So anyway, all her staff walked out on her, the whole lot. And she was left with nobody, and she was really stuck. And she said, well, come and, come and cook for me. I said, I can't cook. I said, I can only cook. She said, you can cook, cook a meal, can't you? And I said, yes, but I never cooked in a hotel. And anyway, she pestered and pestered me to go and, and help her out. And I said, well, I've got Carol. I had to take Carol with me. She was only three. Yeah, she was only, she might have been about four by then. I used to have to take her to work with me while I worked there. I said, oh, I said, I'll come until you get someone else. But she didn't, I don't think she even tried to get anyone else. So how long did you end up working there for? Oh, until she went out to the hotel. I don't know how long that was. A few years? Can't remember. Yeah, that would be two or three years, I suppose. Did you get on with her very well? Oh yes, I got on all right with her. I walked out on her once or twice. She, she was a funny person. And uh, I said to her one day, I don't know what she said to me, I said to her one day, I don't have to put up with this, I don't have to work. So I walked out, away down the street, and she came running after me. She <laughs> said, you know I'm a sick woman, Gwen, she said. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know I mean, didn't mean what I said. So please come back. So back I go. So this happened about a couple of times until she sold the hotel and went out. Uh, was she quite old? Oh no, she was only middle aged. Oh. But, uh, Were you paid very well? Probably, I can't remember. So did you just walk around there? Oh yes, it was only around the corner. And so you had a bit of a hectic day though, didn't you? When you were working there? Oh yes, it was fairly busy. Didn't you have to um, um, send your children off to school and go and work there mm -hmm. and come back? Yeah, but I used to, um, well I used to go at 7 o'clock in the morning, Clary would get the kids off to school and then um, I'd go home about 2 o'clock and I'd get my own tea ready for home leave the veggies all ready for Clary to put on um, and then I gave Ron cheap board if he kept an eye on Helen and, and Carol you know if he was home from work he'd start to work in the post office postman and I said I'd give him cheap board if he'd come home and keep an eye on the kids because I had to go back to work at five o'clock and then what time did you get home? Oh, about seven, about seven, something like that. Mm. Where was Olive at this stage? Oh, she was working. Oh, she had two or three jobs. She worked in Christchurch, and she worked, and she finished up by working over on the exchange in Greymouth. That's where she met Ray. Oh, so that's where she met him. And yes, so she boarded with Ray's people. That's where she met him. Did. Ron, so Ron was a postman, was he? Yeah, to start with. Do you know for how long? Oh, not very long, because he always wanted to be a plumber, and uh, he went round and saw Mr. Stubbersfield, and he started him off. He was apprenticed to him. I don't know how long the apprenticeship was. Five years, wasn't it, Helen? Don't know. Okay. So, then... When did he meet Ursula? Oh, 
I can't remember. I don't know what year. I haven't got a clue. Was Uncle Ham living on the west coast when Olive went over there? Yeah. So is that why she didn't mind going over to Greymouth? Or? Well, I think she, I think she worked for Cam and Corrie for a wee while, but they, her and Corrie didn't get on. So, and then she joined the post office, went to work there. Did you used to go and stay with any of Granddad's brothers? Yeah, you, we used to go over the coast and stay. They had the Bailey for a start, the Bailey Hotel. That's where they started off. That's where Mum used to go on holiday. I suppose she did, yes, yeah, she went up there one year. Because we found a letter she wrote to you and it had no spaces between any of the words. What was that? The letter you wrote to Nana and Granda yeah. and the Bailey. Yeah. And Mum broke a cup or something. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember that. She was no. really scared of Corrie. And I cried. <laughs> Did you? I thought I was going to get told off because I broke a cup. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. And so, then after that pub, you moved on to another one? Yeah, well, now what happened? Um, oh, yeah, she went out of that hotel and another couple took it. And the couple that were taking it, I knew they were alcoholics and I wasn't going to work for them. In fact, I don't think anyone stayed, any of the staff. And um, so I, I, I walked out, I didn't bother staying then. And then I was asked to go and help at a restaurant uptown uh, for six weeks. So I went there. I think by this time Carol was at school and I went and worked there for six weeks and um, after that, it was at the cray pot up in, in the town and sometimes we used to go and have a drink in the Delphi after I'd finished. Chloe would have to come pick me up to see from work. We'd go to the Delphi and have a couple of drinks and uh, we're in there this night. And the publican, Roy Ford, used to work with Clary before he took the pub. And he said to me, um, what about coming working for me? And I said, you must be joking. I said, how could I work in the leading hotel in Christchurch, in Kaikoura? <coughs> and he said, well, you worked with Pierre, didn't you? And I said, yeah, that was all right. I said, I, I'm couldn't work in the leading hotel and he said, why can't you? He said, you can cook, can't you? And I said, I can cook a meal at home and that. So anyway, he talked me into going, he said, go on out and see Audrey out in the kitchen. So I went out and saw Audrey and I said, I don't know. I said, Roy wants me to come and work for you. She said, well, well what a good idea. She said, what about coming? So I said, well, what do you have? And she said, well, your ordinary meat, she says, we have um, a pie, an uh, apple pie or something like that, and we have a cold sweet, and we have a steam pudding, and something rather else. And I said, well, that's out, I can't make pastry. And she said, oh, well, you can try anyway. So anyway, I, I finished up by taking the job. And I thought, oh, well, I'll buy the pastry. I've only got to go over the road and get it. So for two weeks I bought the pastry and then I got a bit cheesed off with that and I thought, oh, I'll try and make it. So I made it and it got eaten and nobody complained. So from then on I made the, I made the pastry. So I worked there until I had to go to hospital. So I suppose you had to do all your own dishes? And no. The Delphi, I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was cook the meats and make the puddings. And I didn't have to do anything else. And so you like that? So I didn't do any veggies or any dishes or anything like that. Did you like that? Yeah, that was quite good. And so why did you have to go to hospital? Oh, well I had to go, that's when I had a hysterectomy. Oh, in the meantime, Olive got married while I was at the Delphi. Oh, okay. And, um, Did she get married in Kaikoura? Yeah. 
she got married in Carcor, and Helen and uh, Carol, Carol and Helen were flare girls, weren't you? Yeah. And oh, yeah, they got married, and and I went into hospital straight after, and had the hysterectomy, and Olive and Rachel took Helen and. Carol uh, took them home for a fortnight. And so you were over there for over a month. Were you? Mm. Oh yes, because I was a fortnight in hospital and then I was a month. I went down to Invercargill to stay with Mum and Dad. To, oh, so they were still down there? To recuperate, yeah. Well, was your dad working down there still or had he retired? Who, Clary? No, your dad. He'd retired. Had he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it a good wedding? Yeah. Olive and Ray's? Yeah, quite a good. <gasps> Terribly cold morning. Bitterly cold morning. Freezing. It was June. And she got married in the Catholic Church, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. That was you. Helen showed you the frocks. Yeah, you've still got they them. Wore. Yeah. So then you recuperated and then you went back to the Adelphi again? No, that, um, no, I didn't go back. They had to get someone else because I was off too long and um, they got someone else. So I, I didn't work there for a while and then uh, I got word from the pier. They wanted me to go down there. And, uh, wasn't fussy, he tried to get out of it. The new people had taken the pier over, you see. So I finished up, I went back there. And I worked there, I don't know how long. I worked there until they went out of the hotel. And then I, and I got a job with Margaret. Where, where's Margaret's? Margaret Dorman. Yeah. Like, at the commercial. Mm -hmm. So that was all the pubs of Kokori? Yeah, I, I worked at all four. Oh, I had a spell at the Blue, too. I, um, I'd, I'd worked at the Blue in between that time for a wee while, not for very long. And um, and then when I, was, when I left the pier, they wanted me back at the Blue. What's the matter? He keeps snoring. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Can't hear it. <laughs> Measure the camera again. <laughs> yeah, I had a spell at the Blue Pacific, but um, only only were leaving, I think. And then when this uh, when I left the pier, a stand workman at the Blue Pacific wanted me to go and work, and he rang up and asked me to go and work for him. And I said, oh, I'd half promised to go to Margaret's. And he said, well, I'll give you more money than Margaret will give you if you'll come here. And uh, I said, no. I said, I've told Margaret I'd go and work there, so I'll go there. So that's what I did. And I worked with Margaret till I just about had a breakdown. Was, was that because of... Exhaustion. Oh, it was. <laughs> I think we had to work hard, didn't we, Helen? Yeah, yeah, she was awful to work for. Yeah, she she was really hard to work for. And um, anyway, I I thought I was heading for a breakdown. I, I must have been to the doctor, and he told me to ease up, Doctor Gordon. Because you were working hard. Yeah. So he said to me, "Oh, you better ease up." He said, "You're doing too much." So anyway. I said, OK. So then about fortnight after that, I went to work one morning. And um, I don't know what happened. I couldn't. I started to cry, and I couldn't stop crying. I cried and cried, and I didn't know what I was crying for. And um, Molly Garlick said to me, yeah, oh, I'll go and get Margaret. And I said, no, don't get Margaret. She can't do anything. Margaret was in the bar. So she went and brought her out. And she said, what's the matter, Gwen? And I said, I don't know. I said, I just can't stop crying. And um, 
she said, well, is there anything wrong at home? And I said, no. I said, everything's all right. But Grandad was drinking quite oh, a lot. That, all through that, yeah. So I said, no, I, I don't know. I just can't stop crying at all. Nothing wrong. So she said to Molly, I'll take her home. So Molly took me home. I got into bed and my father and mother were living just around the corner from the... So corner. Dad shifted up? And uh, I'd know she'd have gotten to bed and, uh, and, and Dad arrived around. I think Margaret must have rung him because he said, oh, the doctor's coming. And I said, what for? He said, oh, well, he said, we rang him. So I said, oh. So anyway, Dr. Gordon arrived. And he said, uh, oh, what's the matter? And I said, I don't know. I said, I just can't stop crying. I said, I keep on crying all the time. He said, yes, I told you to give up work. He, no, he said, I told you to ease up. He said, now you can give up work altogether. And um, so that was that. He said, I told you before to ease up, and you didn't. So I said, you give up work. So I had to give up work then. I never went back after that. Can you remember um, after Grandma and Granny Bentley moved to Kaikoura, you and Dad were in bed, early, it was early one morning and you and Dad were in bed, it must have been before Christmas and Granny Bentley used to get up really early and he came round this morning and he walked inside and he knocked on your door and he says, Gwen, the chooks are on the piano <laughs> and Mum sat up in bed and she said, what? What are the chooks doing on the piano? <laughs> And they were ones that they'd killed and had stuff, they are ready to be cooked. <laughs> it was Christmas Eve and Mum said, well, they were coming round for Christmas dinner, you see, Mum said, well, I'll take the chooks and I'll stuff them for you. So I said, oh, that'll be a help. So she took those and I was doing all the rest of it, you see, and I always liked to have everything done the night before that I didn't have to do much on Christmas morning. So anyway... <laughs> We were still in bed and Dad arrived round with the chooks and he, I don't know why he put them on the piano probably because we had the cat and he had to put them up somewhere high you see. So he must put them up on the piano and he came in and I'm in sound sleep and I wake up and he said, oh Gwen, I just called round to tell you that the chooks are up on the piano. I says, what the hell are they doing up there? <laughs> And he stood there with his mouth open. He didn't, he didn't know what to say. And I suddenly I realised that it was the stuffed chooks that Mum had taken the stuff.